My name is Kira Jones. I'm 15 years old. I'm from Aberystwyth and I'm transitioning from male to female. Being transgender to me is like I feel completely different inside to what I looked like outside. Pretty much thought everyone like hated to look in the mirror and that whole subject just like made them feel gross. But when you like find out there's more people out there going through the same, you like understand it. You're like, okay, this, I can help this. Like this isn't what I'm going to be like forever. Yeah, I think it's important for Kira to be here today as well and just really sort of see that it's not just one or two people or a couple of dozen people who are supporting us, but everybody is. <laughs> L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. V is very, very extraordinary. E is even more than anyone that you adore can love. Birmingham Pride was so much fun. I think it was such like an eye opener. Like it was such a good event to go to. And the biggest thing was, I think everyone just understood each other and you really didn't have to explain yourself. And it was just such like a liberating event. It was so nice. Take my heart and please don't break it. Love was made for me and you. So this dress is the dress I wore to Sparkle. The Sparkle event will always have like such a, like a big place in my heart. The Swansea Sparkle has drawn the attention of 15-year-old Clear, who grew up on a farm near Aberystwyth. He has just started his transition to become female. Sparkle was like the pr first time I like properly went outside in like a dress and heels and stuff. And I think that was such a big thing to accomplish for me. Because obviously it needed to happen one time. And I think doing it in such like a safe environment like that when everyone's like pretty much in the same boat as you. It was such like a comforting feeling like being able to do that. And it was so liberating. I felt so like empowered and only good has come from that event. Everybody. Give a big round of applause to Miss Sparkle 2050. Well deserved. I think I was very nervous when the documentary was coming out because, you know, it's it's not really the normal, like, it's not really the norm around here. It's a very rural place, you know, like, you look out the window and it's just fields and mountains and it's lovely in that sense. But on the other side, there isn't that much diversity going on here. But I've honestly had such good positive feedback and I think that's such like a nice thing. It was hard when, when, they, when they first told me, yes. I know she has been drip feeding me for a long time. Um, his ambition was to be a, a world famous drag queen. He said that, he told me that quite a few years ago, that was his ambition. I said, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, I just, I just laughed it off with him at the time. And then I thought, no, yeah, yeah, these better drag queens, they, they do make a, uh, quite a bit of money, perhaps. Yeah, that's, if, if, if you can pull it off, good luck to him. I thought, a friend phoned me up the day after I told him that he was trans transgender. The following morning, he phoned me up and told me, she hadn't slept at all. He'd been on the internet all night looking what transgender means. And he offered me help if I wanted help to consult or employ or whatever is the term of uh, the best psychiatrist available to talk clear out of, of transgender. But uh, I, I, I had to explain, no, um, that is not possible. Um, that is how clear it is, and that is how transgender people are. 
you know, the shows and farming is so important to my dad and like it really is his life and it will be quite a big deal to, you know, step out there because obviously, you know, physically I've changed quite a bit from last year when they saw me. We're going to a, an event which is very traditional Welsh farming, so I'm not expecting everyone to understand it. But yeah, I guess we'll just see what happens. <laughs> Mum, it doesn't open <laughs> for real. <laughs> Ta-da! It's kind of fun getting everything ready and like we put this really nice colour onto the cards because it just works better with the colour of the animals so it just goes nice together instead of like the black ones they give you. And um, yeah, it's just the last few things now and then they'll go to the ring. So I guess it's like quite nerve wracking today to like think about people seeing like this side of me because obviously like the farming community have known me as here since like I've grown up around these people and like obviously like I haven't really seen my family like this and I think I was just so like stressed and like a bit nervous of what they'd think because I didn't want anyone to say anything to my mum or dad because like I don't want to put them through something that is happening to me because it's not fair on them then. Having Oshan with me at like such an important like stages of my life, like going to school and even here today, like seeing the family and stuff, it's been such a big help. Like having someone that's there with you 100% supportive and like he just gets you. I think that's just like such a nice thing to have. I guess like I told Oshan I was transgender before my mum. It just really didn't shock me. Like. I don't know, a lot, I feel like it, it takes a eyes, lot to shock me. I feel like in your yeah. eyes it just like wasn't a big deal. It's like normal, I think, yeah. Kira's fashion is like great now. She, like she dresses a lot better than like most girls at our school. <laughs> like I'm not trying to sound like horrible or anything, but it's true. <laughs> I think she, Kira's been so brave throughout this all because like we live in such like a small place where everyone knows each other and like everyone's business. And yeah, I think she's been extremely brave throughout it all. I think the major like tipping point to me was when I got my extensions put in. You know, now looking at old pictures when I looked more masculine, it was it's so weird because it doesn't look like the same person anymore. I think maybe I was very naive in the past in that yes, Leah's gonna transition and that's pretty pretty much it. But in order to get medical help, some of the things we actually have to go through, such as psychological assessment regular clinics down in the Tavistock in London, and they have to be gone through. This will be the next step, would be on um, testosterone blockers. So that'll just slow down the kind of, um, like, boy puberty. And then the next step after that will be on oestrogen, which is the girl hormone. Eventually, I think the right thing would be would to do is to go down the operation route, just because I think it'd, I think I'd be feel, I'd feel a lot more comfortable in the long run. Obviously, you do get some people just asking, you know, what if you change your mind one day? But I think unless you're living it, you don't really understand how it feels. Like you've never been so sure about anything, and like, I think it's a positive doing it so young because then, you know, I have my whole life ahead of me as a woman. I've always known I've had to do this and there's just no going back for me and it's, I don't see any other life but this. Ready. Clear. I had a tough time all through his school up until the two or three years ago, where he's suddenly got nothing to hide. He's a lot more confident. You can see him walking, whatever I see him walking, his head up, he's enjoying life. Ah, oh, you know, he was, yeah. Um, he's a much happier person. Do I call Thier a he or a she? To be honest with you, I don't know. At present, he's still here. And in that respect, I still call him my son. 
it's not going to be easy to change, I know that. That will come with time, I don't know. I feel, like, comfortable with the name here right now. It really doesn't bother me if I get called a he or a she or a boy or a girl, like, when the time is right, I'll be, you know, one day I'll be like, OK, you know, I want to be referred to as she now. Oh, my God, it's going to be so cute. <laughs> I need to iron it tonight. I don't know how to iron, You kept but... it in your bag. <laughs> yeah. It's very vibrant. I love it. Mm. Should I share my suit? Yeah. Ooh, a navy. It's nice. Mm -hmm. It feels lovely. The I material know. feels so nice. It's such a comfy thing on as well. Mm. I looked at a lot of dresses, like, they weren't really me. They were very, like, American, like, prom, like, very big, like, almost kind of pageanty dresses. Um, but yeah, I think I just want, like, more of a simple dress, even though it's, like, so vibrant. My first impressions on Cleo's dress is, like, I really like it. It's, like, very colourful, which I wasn't expecting. It just screams look at me, which I really like. But I'm quite, like, a very out-there person. Like, I'll wear any colour. You know, my shrimp jumper. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, basically no on pink. I guess it's like, leave this quite a big deal. It's like your last day with like the people you've been with for five years. Yeah, year 11 has gone by so fast. Too fast. And now it's like, tomorrow. So I think like, going to leave us in like heels and a dress, I think it'll be quite a big, not shock, but it'll just be like different and I'm excited. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, yeah, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, ooh, 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 ooh. and I'm feeling good. <laughs> It has been fundamental, her family support, in giving her the confidence to be who she is. And her friendship group in school as well, totally supportive, and that has made a huge difference. Make sure your hair is exactly how you would like it to be viewed in 30 years from now, OK? Everybody do something, make it happen. Ready? Keep up. Two. And three. Mum rang me and Mum said she wanted to come in to speak to me with Lear. And they came in and explained to me how she felt and what their progress is going to be and what we as a school could do to help her. Um, did she want to change her name? Did, you know, did, did she want to wear a skirt in school? And I think you've got to be led by what the people themselves want. And then if you can adjust anything for them, so taking them out of pee or finding a, a unisex toilet, then, then you do that. Her being much more feminine is who she is, and you can see the happiness and confidence shining through with her. We've like done leave us now, so it's like, this is our summer now. It's like exciting, it's like, let's go and do stuff. No worries, nothing to worry about. No. We're free. <laughs> let's get wasted. Mm -hmm. It feels like ages since last time we were in there. Oh, how did you leave us go? Really good, actually. 
I think everyone, everything just went really well and like everyone looked really good and, and I just really enjoyed everything. You have this photo of me and Ashton. Oh my God. You look so tall. I love that dress. Thank you. Did you wear heels? Yeah, I did. <laughs> no, these like grey suede heels. Just thought I'd be the tallest girl there. That was usually me. <laughs> she doesn't need help with uh, makeup tips because she's already beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking that last time. I was like, as a girl, you've got long eyelashes, perfect eyebrows, big lips. She's got no worries. <laughs> it's got everything I try and fake. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy with that. Is that enough off for you? Yeah, thank yeah, you. Let me cool them off for you then. Thank you. This is so good. Perfect. So it's basically chocolate cake with chocolate in the middle and chocolate on top. Sorted. Right, you guys can have some later. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Happy birthday. Cheers. Ching. <laughs> my main two presents from my mum and dad were my phone and tickets to go see Beyonce, which is amazing. But uh, my mum just got me some, like this bracelet just to open on the day, which is really nice. When you realise, like, oh, family have got me maybe, like, you know, like, a card with butterflies on it or something, you know, or a bit more, like, maybe gender-neutral cards, which is a bit, like, oh, it's, like, nice for them to think of. Like, I think I've definitely noticed it this birthday, of course. So there's 16 years since she was born, and, geez, time, time has, has flown, hasn't it? I remember that the night he was born. That was quite an emotional time. Yeah, and, and just imagine he was <laughs> two hand two handfuls. He was just look at it at him now, or her now, whatever. I'm quite proud of him, and proud of his determination and his braveness in doing what he has done. He is living his life to make himself happy, and makes people around him happy. And I think that is something that anybody should look up to him for. Look at all these photos you've been tagging me in. It's like really old photos when I was like last year and it's just crazy to see how much like Everything's changed in the year. That one in the top right as well. I know you're pulling a face, but it's still really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh. Thank you. So cute. <laughs> I love birthdays. I don't remember pain. The only thing I remember so clearly is what I smelt like. Like burning like flesh. Like it, I remember that smell and it was so like stuck in my brain. I have like the slightest, slightest memory when we were in Aini in Abba. And I just remember I looked down, I saw black. Like I just saw my legs black. Teen badly burned in beach party fire horror. A Penglai school pupil suffered burns to her legs so severe she was faced with a possibility of amputation when petrol was thrown on a f fire at a beach party. It was my friend's birthday and we were just sat around the fire. And I think like me and Oshan were literally like getting up to leave. And um, someone shouted like, let's get this party started or something. I remember this like pink, like liquid getting poured onto the fire. And then I heard like a pop and I turned around. I was like, oh, like the fire's exploded. Like we need to like get away from this. And then I was like, okay, I'm on fire. Like what's going on? 
So I think when I went over to the car, um, I helped her slowly get out and I I saw the look on Hugh's face and that scared me. Um, but I just held on to Leah's hand and we got her into a and E. I I looked and I saw some massive blisters, especially on her, on her right leg, which, oh, never seen anything like that. Ugh. I hate worrying people. I've always been like that. Like, no matter what it is, I hate worrying people. And oh, I remember this so well. Like, I don't know why, but my friend was phoning my mum when we were in the car to, like, you get to the hospital and stuff. And for some reason, I was like, tell her not to worry. Like, I don't want her to be worried. There's been, been a really intense, I think, emotionally and physically, um, an intense time for everyone. Obviously, Leah being in pain has had to sort of fight against that pain and, and sort of win her own little battles over her own body, really. You have swim. to swim away from the pain. Yeah. <laughs> Punch the pain. Tickle the pain. Tickle, Tickle the, pain. the pain was the best one. I think you're on quite strong medicine then when you were tickling the pain. When they said two years to completely heal, I was in tears and they thought I was upset. And I said, no, 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 you've just said the phrase completely heal which is something I never expected to hear. And it just gave me so much hope that the experts knew that she would heal with time. Obviously, transition's all about your body and the, and the way your body looks and having that body that really matches how you're feeling. So having something happen that's damaged important parts of her body, very visible parts of her body with her legs, potentially could have had quite a negative impact on her. But I think because she was already in such a strong place with her transition and she had such strong body confidence, that's possibly help, helped her get get through this to some extent as well. Like, I didn't realise until, like, a few days after it happened, like, all my extensions got singed. Because obviously, like, my hair was such a big, like, part of this whole thing. And then I was like, well, I have to get my extensions out, obviously, because it's like I can't, like, I can't, keep them in and I was like well what's gonna happen like am I just gonna go back to like what I was last year but then I think when I got them out I felt so relieved and I felt so happy and like realizing like how long and like thick my hair got maybe sort of accepting and realizing that I really don't need these extensions to feel like me anymore and I think that was the most rewarding feeling so um, me and Mum went shopping last week and I got these trousers. Everyone needs like a piece in their wardrobe like this just to kind of show like, you know, bad things happen in life, but put on some yellow trousers and everything will be all right. This is the first time I've, I've come with them to the Tavistock then. To be honest, I have I, I've lost, lost track of, of, of the appointments they've had. But due to uh, commitments, I've been unable to, to come. Uh, but I know the last one was a uh, rival show week, but uh, uh, that was definitely a, a no-no for me. London is where we have access to the specialist, yes. But it's, you know, it's a five-hour journey one way. You know, it's, it's, it's a two-day two project. Today, it's a bone scan to see how... how Clear's body will be able to cope with the change in, in the hormone treatments which are going to be necessary. Family reaction has been quite a difficult one. Um, it, it was very hard to, to tell my mother. To be honest, I failed. And she learnt from another, another source. And I'm sorry to say this, but I did not know how to tell her. And, I'm, and that is... is a regret I got, yes. Um, 
but it was hard for her. But as I gather, she is coming to terms with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's you okay? Did it? How's it? How did it go? Really good. Yeah? yeah. A bit nervous, but it was good. They did a scan of your hip first, wasn't it? Yeah. And then a scan of the spine. Oh, as right. Well. So, yeah, oh, good. Getting the bone scan done is obviously a very important step in the sort of journey and sort of getting hormones and doing it properly and getting the bone scan to make sure that nothing bad will happen and it's just a lot safer way of doing it. So in about five or ten minutes we're going to go for a group meeting with other kids and families in the same situation as us and we're going to go talk to the nurse and she'll explain the sort of next few steps for us and it's, it's an opportunity for us to ask questions. It just really does make you appreciate how lucky I am to have both parents that support me equally and are always there for me and are willing to come to these meetings with me. I think we're getting the results soon and fingers crossed everything will be OK so I can carry on the process and be prescribed to hormone blockers. It's such a big deal to be on hormone blockers because I think more than anything, it just slows down what's already going on. The medical part of this has been really good in my experience. Like, I think everything's been moving really well and quickly and everything's just gone in our favour. So after going to the GP and the G GP refers here to the um, mental health service and then they referred to the Tavistock and Portman Clinic in London. That support network is what... I like about it, it's just really like, you don't feel alone, like you always feel like you have someone to talk to. Cause I think there might've been like one appointment where I just sat and cried for like the whole hour. And I don't think I realized how much emotion was built up inside me until that appointment. So I think that sort of surprised me. When the professionals are looking at home life, they've got a lot of aspects they're actually looking at. One of the questions I was asked was, because I only have one child, was whether I was disappointed with the gender of the child when, when born. And that was that didn't come into it at all. So I think they're trying to make sure that this is coming from the child, that it's not coming from the parents. There was a list of parts of my body and I had to list from like one to 10 on how much I liked that body part. So I think it really just sort of made you think and it was like, okay, like this is sort of right what I'm doing because it's very obvious by this. It's really odd when I think back to this time last year. Um, Leah wasn't dressing full time. As far as the majority of people knew, Leah was a boy. That's what she looked like. That's how she dressed. And now when I see her every day, being this lovely young woman, being my daughter, <laughs> you know, she, she is my daughter. And it's just incredible to think back to a year ago and exactly how much she's gone through in this last year and just to see her so much happier and see her being herself now is, is just fantastic. So I think the most exciting thing that I'm looking forward to is Sparkles coming up. And I think that just makes me so happy, like, because it's how we started everything. And it's sort of like looking back at like where I was going to Sparkle last year, it's like how much has happened. And I think I'm just so excited to see everyone and see all our friends that are there and to hand over the crown and crown like new Miss Sparkle, which I'm really excited for whoever wins. And I'm truly excited to go. Can I say excited one more time? Excited. I like this. That's cool. Good. Yeah. Yeah, because you've got to be in the budget, obviously. Yeah. Because you? Yeah. You've got to hand the crown over, you know yeah. that, don't you? But I should be doing a little interview with you first. Yeah. And then, of course, when the when the when the winner comes, uh -huh. we've got to put the crown. Yeah. So, yeah. Thinking about a little bit at that time, it's just gonna make me feel like like an outcast. I didn't feel like I was normal, I guess. Because I didn't know at that age there was a 
a lot of us that were different. So it's me, it's 10 years from now. I know I'll get a go. It's a really good feeling sort of being back in Swansea again from last year. Sort of seeing the old documentary earlier. I wasn't confident at all. I looked so afraid of everything. I wasn't holding myself properly. And I think just to see the confidence I've gained in a year, it's, it's crazy. It's like, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. I'm really excited for tonight. <laughs> And I find there's a lot more younger people coming through now. I'm as young as 14, being in touch with me now. Um, asking me questions and, and and progressing much quicker than what we ever did. Much, much quicker than we ever did. We was restricted, of course, at our age because we didn't have the law on our side. But today, they've got Clark Branch with the law and they, 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 they know they're protected. And so they're coming out and progressing much, much quicker than we ever did. And good luck to them. Because that's lives not, not going to be wasted. Ours was wasted. Theirs isn't. Now, judges, what you've got to do tonight, you've got to judge these contestants as I bring them up. We're looking for poise. We're looking for the effort, what they've put in to being what they are tonight. Coordination, personality. Can you remember last year's winner, the youngster from Aberystwyth, Young Clear? Come on, darling. <laughs> Anybody who's seen the documentary would have seen Clear on there. Now isn't she grown to be a lovely, beautiful big girl now, isn't she, eh? <laughs> it's been a crazy year. I think, obviously, being able to hold that title, I've been able to do so much stuff, and it's been so amazing. I can't wait to give the crown to someone else. Fantastic. Now, darling, where are you from? Swansea. Swansea, oh, that's good. Judges, did you hear that? Swansea, come on, yes. Come on, do it for Swansea. Yes, do it for Swansea. Now, darling, if you won tonight, what would you do for Swansea and Swansea Sparkle? Well, obviously, I try and open some sort of LGBT group in the school I go to to let people know that they can be themselves without these restrictions. Good for you, darling. Better said. Very well said. I came out as trans this year, and this is the first LGBT event I've ever been to. Good for you, darling. Big round of applause for them. Seeing all you lovely people here and witnessing what I've seen today, I'm very, very excited for the future. That's a very nice evening, Judge. Come on, let's have a big round of applause for them. Well, I'm Jamie Lee, and I'm here to Right, we've got the results. Now, before I give these results out, girls, I want you to know I had no fucking part in this whatsoever, all right? <laughs> so do not shoot the messenger. So the first prize could please come forward with a big round of applause for Willow Jane. <laughs> there you go. Please put the crown on up. Big round of applause, come on. Bit of music there, quiet. Quiet. <laughs> Tonight we're leaving with this experience on Grab Out. You know, I think we're leaving with so much more friends and I just feel so overwhelmed with the kindness of everyone in there. We might not have the tiara or the pillow or the sash that we had last year, but we have so much more and it's just such a lovely feeling to walk away with.
So we're in the surgery right now. I'm about to go into the, the nurse's office to have my first injection for my testosterone blocker. And I'm really excited, kind of nervous, but I think I'm just really excited to get the first sort of major step over and done with. Whatever happens, people are going to be happy in their life. And I think this is a, a, another step to making clear the person she wants to be. As soon as the needle went in, I think it was just like a burst of emotions. It was like, OK, this is done. This is insane. It's such a relief and kind of emotional that it's done. She's squeezing my hand quite hard. <laughs> and then I think I looked at Leah and sort of saw the happiness and the emotional emotion in her eyes. So that was me off then. <laughs> so we had, we had a little cry and a good old hug together. I think it just puts things into perspective how far I've come and I've changed not only looks or being able to get the injection, but personality. And I think I've grown so much as a person in this past year. Ten years from now, I don't know. I guess my future is in my hands. I don't know what I'll be doing. I hope it's something I love. I hope I'm surrounded by people I love. And I hope I'm happy. For details of organisations which offer advice and support with gender identity, go online to the BBC Action Line website. Still to come tonight on BBC One, Nick Robinson asks what just happened at the general election in Panorama.